In this video, we are going to solve problems of chapter 6 that is lines and angles of class 9th. So let's continue with the first one. The problem states that line AB is parallel to line CD such that the transversal XY subtends angle APX equals 50 degree and angle CQY equals 130 degree. We need to find the value of angle APQ which is equal to X and angle PQD which is equal to Y. Since transversal XY is a line, Therefore, 50 plus x equals 180 degree as it forms linear pair. On transposing 50 to RHS, we get x equals 180 minus 50 which equals 130 degree. Since line CD and transversal XY are intersecting lines, therefore y equals 130 degree as they are vertically opposite angles. Moving on to the second problem. The problem states that line AB is parallel to line CD and line CD is parallel to line EF. Let XY be the transversal subtending angles X, Y and Z such that the ratio of angle Y to angle Z equals 3 ratio 7. We need to find the value of X, Y and Z. To solve this problem, we need to connect the given ratios to their corresponding values. To do so, let the number required for simplifying the given ratios be K. Therefore, the value of angle Y equals 3K and the value of Z equals 7K. As from figure, Angle Y and angle Z do not have any relationship as angle Y is exterior to parallel line CD and angle Z is interior to parallel line EF. So to establish the relationship between angle Y and angle Z, we need to consider angle 1. From figure, angle Y equals to angle 1 as they are vertically opposite angles. Now the sum of angle Y and angle Z equals 180 degree as sum of co-interior angles is supplementary. On putting the value of angle Y and angle Z, we get 3K plus 7K equals 180 degree which on simplification becomes 10k equals 180 degree. On transposing, we get k equals 18. Therefore, the value of y becomes 3 into 18 which equals 54 and value of z equals 7 into 18 which equals 126. Now, the value of x can be calculated in two ways. That is, in relation to angle y or angle z. Let's calculate it with relation to angle y. From figure, it can be seen that angle x plus angle y equals 180 degree as sum of co-interior angles is supplementary. On putting the value of angle y, x equals 180 degree minus 54, which equals 126 degree. As per the second method that is in relation to angle z, from figure it can be seen that both angle x and angle z are formed within parallel lines a, b and e, f. Thus, angle x equals angle z, as they are interior alternate angles. Therefore, the value of x equals 126 degree. Moving on to the third problem. The problem states that there is a line a, b parallel to line c, d, and FE perpendicular to CD. There exists point G on line AB such that angle GED equals 126 degree. We need to find the value of angle AGE, angle GEF and angle FGE. From figure angle GED equals the sum of angle GEF and FED. Since FE is perpendicular to line CD, therefore angle FED equals 90 degree. Thus our equation becomes angle GED equals angle GEF plus 90 degree. As angle GED equals 126 degree, therefore on transposing we get 126 minus 90 equals GEF, which on simplification becomes 36 degree. For the value of angle AGE, line GE is acting as transversal for line AB and line CD. Therefore the value of angle AGE equals angle GED, as they form interior alternate angles. Thus angle AGE equals 126 degree. Since AB is a line, Therefore, the sum of angle AGE and angle FGE equals 180 degree as it forms linear pair. On putting the value of angle AGE as 126 degree, this equation becomes angle FGE equals 180 minus 126 degree, which on simplification gives 54 degree. Moving on to the fourth problem. The problem states that the segment PQ is parallel to segment ST. The value of angle PQR equals 110 degree and the angle RST equals 130 degree. We need to find the value of angle QRS. Since angle QRS is not formed on either parallel lines, therefore it is impossible to establish any relationship of angle QRS with the given angles. Thus there is a need of construction in such a way that angle QRS is formed on a parallel line. Therefore construct a line XY parallel to segment PQ and ST touching at point R. Now angle QRY equals angle PQR as in parallel lines interior alternate angles are equal. Therefore, angle QRY equals 110 degree. Now from figure, angle QRY equals the sum of angle QRS and angle SRY. As the value of angle QRY equals 110 degree, therefore, the above equation becomes 
110 minus angle SRY equals QRS. As both angles SRY and angle RST touch the same transversal line SR, therefore the sum of angle SRY and RST equals 180 degree as sum of co-interior angles is supplementary. As angle RST equals 130 degree, therefore on transposing we get angle SRY equals 180 minus 130 which equals 50 degree. Now using equation 1 we get angle QRS equals 110 minus 50 which equals 60 degree. Moving on to the next problem. The problem states that line AB is parallel to line CD. The value of angle APQ equals 50 degree and the value of angle PRD equals 127 degree. We need to find the value of angle X and angle Y. As angle X is found with the transversal line PQ, therefore it can establish relation only with the angles found on the same transversal PQ. From figure, angle X equals angle APQ as interior alternate angles are equal in parallel lines. As angle Y does not touch the parallel line AB, therefore angle Y does not have any relation with the given angles. So to have connection with the given angles, consider the sum of angle APQ and angle Y. Now this sum of two angles touches the transversal PR. Therefore it can establish relationship only with the angles found on the transversal PR. Therefore the sum of 50 and Y equals 127 degree as interior alternate angles are equal in parallel lines. Therefore on simplification we get angle Y equals 127 minus 50 which equals 77 degree. Moving on to the last problem. The problem states that PQ and RS are two mirrors parallel to one another. An incident ray AB strikes the mirror PQ at point B. The reflected ray moves along the path BC and strikes through the mirror RS at point C. After striking, it reflects along the path CD. We need to prove that the incident ray AB is parallel to reflected ray CD. To prove this one must know the laws related to reflection of light. To learn about laws related to reflection of light, click on I button. At points of incidence B and C, construct normal PM and CN respectively. When incident ray AB strikes the mirror at point P, it forms angle of incidence that is angle 1 with respect to normal BM. Then as per the laws of reflection, that is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, it forms angle 2 as angle of reflection with the same normal BM. This reflected ray meets mirror RS at point C, making angle of incidence angle 3 with respect to normal CN. And again as per the laws of reflection, it subtends angle 4 as angle of reflection and moves along path CD. Mathematically we have angle 1 equals angle 2 and angle 3 equals angle 4. As normal BM is parallel to normal CN and BC is acting as transversal, therefore angle 2 equals angle 3 as interior alternate angles are equal. Now to prove ray AB is parallel to ray CD, consider those angles which are touching these line segments. From figure it is clear that the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is touching the line AB and transversal BC while the sum of angle 3 and angle 4 touches the line CD and the transversal line BC. So adding equation 1 and 2 we get angle 1 plus angle 3 equals angle 2 plus angle 4. As angle 2 equals angle 3 therefore this equation becomes angle 1 plus angle 2 equals angle 3 plus angle 4. From figure the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 forms angle ABC while the sum of angle 3 and angle 4 becomes angle BCD. Since the interior alternate angles are equal, therefore we conclude ray AB is parallel to ray CD. So this was it for the video. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching.